Let me just say that, um, yes, as Ludo pointed out, I've been doing a lot of work in this area. And today, I'll focus primarily on um, Sub-Saharan Africa, where I've been doing most of my work more recently. Um, OK, so the next slide, please. So um, first, I just want to commend you on a very useful report. And I especially found the cross-regional comparisons and the emphasis on education very, very interesting. So you, you classified um, types of industrial activity by educational requirements. And I find that really useful because <clears throat> there's this notion that, you know, it's so easy to move workers from from rural areas to urban areas and put them right into factories. And it's not true. <laughs> uh, at least my experience, um, my experiences in Ghana and also in Ethiopia indicate to me that you have to have a, you know, the foreign investors anyway are, are usually looking for uh, literate people um, with a high school education. Um, <clears throat> so, so I think that's really important, an important message. So um, I did see my chart, the, the chart from a paper I have with Danny Roderick in your report. So I wanted to just give an update on to what we found. I was very excited to see our, our, our chart, but um, uh, we have some new information that's, I think, very important. And um, I want to make the point that a key constraint in agro-processing, which is probably one of the areas where uh, Africa, Sub-Saharan African countries have the most potential a key constraint there is agricultural productivity. And then I wanted to make a pitch for <clears throat> making the theme of your report next year, informality <laughs> in manufacturing. OK, so the next slide, please. <clears throat> and by the way, I do, I do appreciate also the, the link in your, the fact that you do in your report stress the importance of informality. And also, the interesting, it was interesting how you um, added in the um, jobs that are created in the service sector <clears throat> as a result of manufacturing. So just an update on um, structural tr transformation in Africa. Uh, so we, I, I realized, basically, I think that, that, that the um, putting together the period 1990 to 2005 was, was not the greatest thing um, for the countries in sub-Saharan Africa, because in the 90s, we still had <clears throat> a lot of structural adjustment taking place. So it turns out that when we decompose the productivity growth by country group into structural change and within sector productivity growth, we see on the left side, uh, 90 to 99, the numbers that we saw in the report, <clears throat> um, in the report, sorry, in, in similar numbers to what, to what are presented in your report and um, what people have seen based on the paper by Macmillan and Roger. But on the right hand side, when we look at the most recent period, we see that um, growth in Africa worker in sub Saharan Africa has um, been very high. And a little over 1% of that, if we just 